Thank you, Chris. I know I'm a bit biased, but what a card on Saturday night. I mean, the fights we've just been through so far, and of course here now, joined for the main event, Derek Chisora against Joseph Parker. Huge heavyweight clash was due to happen a year or so ago. Now they're finally here in Manchester. Great to be joined, of course, by David Hay and also the training teams for both guys, Buddy McGirt, welcome, and Andy Lee as well. Dave, I'm going to start with you. You've come back from Costa Rica. I saw you were out there for a long, long time. You got Derek ready. Another big roll of the dice. He continues to jump into all these big fights, and this should be a cracker. Yeah, no doubt. Derek wants the biggest fights. He wants to, he wants to leave a legacy. He wants to go out there and for people for many years to know Derek Chisora means war. He means destruction. Um, we pushed it to the, the wire with Usyk last time out. You know, someone who's ranked number one in the world, you know, contender. And I thought he won the fight. It was a very tight fight, very close fight. The two of the judges had it only by two points, seven rounds to five. This time around, he's not going to leave it to the judges. There's been no, no, been no mindset to try to win this fight on points. You know, Joseph Parker, we know, is an excellent boxer, one of the best jabs in the business. Ask um, Andrew Ruiz, ask uh, Carlos Takam how his jab is, and it's, it's a killer. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a simple solution. We're not having a boxing match with Joseph Parker. It has to be a fight. I can guarantee a knockout in this fight. There will be a knockout. This is going to not go in the distance. This is about how much Joseph Parker can take. He's got a great chin. He's went 12, 12 rounds with AJ, 12 rounds with Dylan White, who hit him on the button many, many times. Derek's going to have to do something very, very special on Saturday night. And you know, he's brought in the big guns, Buddy McGirt, you know, a Hall of Fame trainer. You know, we're adding as whatever we can to give Derek what's needed to do the impossible. A lot of people are not giving Derek a shot in this fight. But when you see how Derek comes across the ring in the first round, I think you'll understand exactly where this fight's going. And it's going in a very, very destructive manner. It's going to be all out explosion from the first round. And uh, don't you know, get your popcorn and don't go to the toilet. When we <laughs> talked about the Usyk fight, you know, Usyk guy likes to box on the outside. You see Joseph Parker looks like he's coming light for this fight. Is that, is that an obvious game plan? You've got to get on your bike against Derek Chisora. You yeah. don't stand and, and trade. You don't let him get on your chest. You have to box and move. Without a doubt, anybody who watches Derek Chisora will want to keep him on the outside. And because once Derek's on the inside, ask um, David Price. I spoke to David Price after the fight, and he said when Derek was inside, he didn't, he didn't know where the punches were coming from. He said, from the outside, he could see them coming. But inside, when you're inside with those little gloves, a big, you know, heavy, real heavyweight, even short cuffing shots. He's been practicing this stuff. Inside, the inside game is very, very destructive. And Joseph Parker is going to be in a situation he hasn't been in before. Um, he's fought come forward fighters in the past, like Carlos Hakam and Andrews Jr., but he's been able to keep them at arm's length. So they wasn't really to, they wasn't able to mount any type of assault in the inside game. This is where Derek has to do his work. This is where Derek has to drag him into the deep end from round one. You know, it's not two or three rounds to get into the fight. That that's going to be no, that's going to be no use against someone as sharp as uh, Joseph Parker. So it's going to have to be brutality from round one, and um, I'm excited. Thanks, Dave. Go to the training teams. Andy, first with you. Your first training camp with Joseph Parker. How's it been? He looks in tremendous shape. Looks nice and light, nice and lean and excited. You know all about Derek Chisora. You've seen him fight. You've been there before live on the nights as well. Should be a great heavyweight battle. Yeah, I agree. And I agree with what David said. It, I can only see the fight playing out one way with Derek come forward and bring him war, which he has done over numerous fights in the recent years. And I see Joseph boxing a smart fight. And if Joseph can practice and if Joseph can put into practice what we've been rehearsing and training, then I can see Joseph winning by late stoppage. Um, and as Derek said, we don't want to leave it anything to the judges. The only way to guarantee victory in this game is by getting a knockout. And so as much as they're going for it, we're going to be going for it as well. Obviously, you know, the, the, the clever noise says for Joseph to bit stay on the outside and box as well, but willing to, to get in there and mix it up as well with, with Derek Chisora, is that just a no-no? Well, we might surprise you. We surprised everybody with Tyson Fury against Wilder, and Joseph might do the same. Um, but you'll have to wait and see. Cheers, Andy. Buddy, welcome to the team. Welcome to the madness of War Chisora Camp with David and Dell. How's it been? You've enjoyed it working with these guys and 
you got a guy there full of heart and ready to go on Saturday. It's been interesting, but it's been great. I have no complaints. I mean, the only complaint I have is that everything was locked down in London. I couldn't go anywhere. But other than that, Derek and David Hay and the team made me feel good, made me feel at home, and they welcomed me well. So I really can't complain. We know you know how to study fights. You know how to, to watch different styles. Is, is the analysis that you've heard up here, you know, the way you expect it to plan out? You expect Parker to box <coughs> and move, and Derek's got to cut the no, distance and get I, on the inside? I expect Parker to do both. See, Andy Lee, you know, he's got an old way of thinking. You know what I mean? So what, we, what the, I, I think they're going to do is try to box, yeah. But they're also going to try to fight us inside when they want to fight us inside. Not when we want to fight inside, when they want to fight inside. You know, they want to dictate it. So that I know, I mean, because, you know, they're not going to try to box all night. I mean, I know, I know a guy like Andy, how he thinks. You know, sometimes you got to try to beat a guy at his own game for a little while. So what we got to do is we just got to get down and dirty. We got to hit him on his thigh. We got to hit him on his knees, his back, anywhere. Oh, we're going to mug you, man. I'm just, the only thing safe is your balls. Anything else, we're going after everything. We're going for the gusto. I mean, we got we to drag it down like that. It's, it's no secret. You know, people say, you know, buddy, you know, are you going to get Derek to stick and move? I'm like, what are you, crazy? <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got to be Derek. You just got to sharpen up, I mean, smooth the rough edges, but you got to let him be Derek. And I know that, you know, they're, they're going to try to box, yeah, but I also know they feel in the later rounds they're going to try to fight him inside a little bit, try to break our man down. So we prepare for that. Thank you, buddy. Joe, the back, the, the head, the arms, the thighs. You ready for, that, for that everything legal? that comes? Is that legal? Or? Well, we'll worry about that later. But, um, <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm very prepared for this fight. I've had a great training camp with Andy. We started off in Ireland. Then we moved over to Morecambe. We, had, we have great sparring under our belt. Um, great pad work, bag, everything. And um, I feel like with this fight, physically, mentally, I'm in a great place. Probably the best I've been in a while. Last time out against Junior, a bit of a rugged fight. You've been inactive for a long, long time. You could see the rustiness coming off you. You expect another rugged challenge from, from Derek. I mean, he's going to want to do all those things. He's going to want to find a way on the inside. He's going to want to make you fight. Totally, two totally different styles. You know, Junior Far's style was move and hug, punch uh, every now and then. With Derek, I think it's no secret. He's going to come forward, apply the pressure, like they say, and throw punches everywhere. So my hands have to be up, down, all around. When you look at the rankings right now, particularly the WBO, the IBF, you are right there. I mean, victory on Saturday night will put you right on the verge of trying to regain the world heavyweight title and getting a shot. Yeah. Is, that, is that the ambition? I mean, for Derek, he loves to fight. You know, his world title ambitions might be different to yours as well. But that's the ambition and the thought behind this fight is it's a big profile fight that's going to put you right in line for a shot at the world heavyweight title. It's the, I think it's the perfect fight at the right time. Um, we're right there. You know, get a good victory. There's many other fights out there to, to make and to position yourself when the titles are, you know, are free to fight for. But this is a perfect fight. You know, it's, it's a big card. Not only the main event, the, other, the undercard fights are, as well is very exciting. So I'm looking forward to Saturday. Del Boy, another roll of the dice for you. I thought you were tremendous last time out against Usyk. He didn't stop all night. Interesting, like I was thinking, you know, Joseph Parker trying to position himself for a world title shot. If you win, you'll also do the same. But is that that's not really the mentality, is it? You just you just love to fight. Yeah, you know, I love fighting. Um, put yourself in the world title shot. It's it's okay, you know. Dylan White's been on on the world title shot for the last five years. You know, he hasn't gone anywhere. So uh, I don't want to put myself in those positions. I just want to put myself in positions where I get to fight good fights, basically. And. Uh, and this is right. I mean, I'm fighting Joseph Park again, and then after that, we'll see what happens. I think the improvements you've made have been incredible. I remember when David said to me, uh, building up to the Spilker fight, oh, no southpaws, no southpaws. You know, you went and you destroyed him, and then you fought one of the most skillful southpaws in boxing, and you pushed him all the way. Are you looking more forward to this style? You know, Joseph Parker, he's, you know, he can box, he can fight. Um, he likes to trade it up sometimes as well. You expect a more aggressive fight this time around? Oh yeah, you know, I, I expect I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna do what I do best. You know, come forward, fight, chuck, chuck hell. You know, uh, do what I do every day. You know, just, just roll the dice and just rock and roll. You know, and just go at it. You know, come out those gates. You know, just go. We saw we saw Spider-Man earlier on. There's still a little bit of mystery behind the whole 
spider bite scenario. You know, it's one of those unique excuses. I, I know jo Joseph well, I believe Joseph, <laughs> but there's, there's always been a little bit of doubt. I remember when I phoned David to tell him, you know, I mean, oh, I'm not damn. sure he thinks I'm cream. always dishonest, but there was a lot of people that were thinking that's an interesting one. Yeah, um, you know, the, the guy had a spider butt. We can't, we can't deny it. We don't know if it's true or not, but he had it. And now he's here, so we're not going to cry over spilled milk. Uh, you know, David did a good impression of wearing the Spider-Man suit early on in the morning. <laughs> so it was, it was okay. <laughs> well, you know, the fight's here now, so we're not going to talk about history anymore. That's why it's called history. Well, if you want to see the Spider-Man, David, do you mind go putting your outfit back on? <laughs> underneath here. I've got it oh, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Dale, finally, great card on Saturday night. Again, you know, you're bringing, as you always do in all your, your career, particularly as of late, great value for money. Of course, top to bottom on this card as well. Taylor Jonas, Eubanks back, Dimitri Bivol, Campbell Hatton, James Tennyson. It's going to be a great night, and you're going to, you're going to put it on the line once again for the fans. Yeah, it's going to be a great night, man. You know, good things are, like, good things are happening. You know, um, great card. It's a big card, but we don't have that a little edge on. We don't have the fans. It's just depressing, but what can we say? Pay-per-view it. <laughs> <laughs> and good as well, because last time you were going to fight Josie Parker, of course, you were put as co-main event on the Taylor Progre card, yes. and you didn't really appreciate that. So right in your rightful place as main event this time around. As you say, the king is back. <laughs> Long live the king. Long live the king, I'm back. Yeah, so I'm, just, I'm buzzing, man. Listen, all I'm saying to those fans at home, man, you know, um, I'm gonna bring smoke, and then I know my, my opponent here is gonna bring something which he's gonna be on his bike, but it's okay. <laughs> um, you know, uh, he's gonna be cycling, <laughs> cycling back to Australia, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> But it's, it's, it's all good, though, man. So uh, we, we, we're buzzing, you know, we're exciting. You know, you know I know right now I'm still, I'm still having laughing jokes, but, you know, when I come tomorrow, you'll know what time it is. Del Boy, Joseph, thank you. Andy, Buddy, David, thank you so much. Great heavyweight fight. That was the longest press conference ever because Saturday night is stacked. An unbelievable night of boxing from start to finish at the AO Arena in Manchester, live on Sky Sports Box Office in the UK. The zone all around the world, wherever you are, do not miss Saturday night. It's going to be a tremendous night of boxing. And gentlemen, if we could have a group picture here with the, with the gents out the front. Thank you. felt like a good idea at the time. It's felt like a good idea at the time, but I can't quite see where I am and who's coming. Um, Delboy, so many questions, I can't, so many questions about who was Spider-Man this morning. It wasn't- Are you sure you want to put that on your face? Cause that was somewhere else before. Can you smell it? I, I, put, I, put, a, I put a mask on. I put a mask on underneath, don't worry. Ever with us can you, let me know. Can you tell me what happened at breakfast? Where did the idea come from? Uh, it, it's totally unique that you would have breakfast with your opponent, but you just said there quite an ominous finish to that. I may be your friend now, but come fight night and bring in something completely different. Uh, you know what? It's just, um, it's just, it's, it's, we in lockdown. You know, we in a bubble and there's, there's nothing much happening, you know, so a uh, bit of breakfast and a bit of banter, you know, reading your opponent, see what he thinks, seeing his movements, how he's jittering. And then I saw, I saw a lot anyway. And then, uh, do, you, do you think you were getting him jittering over breakfast? No, no, I was just having a conversation. You know, conversation, just chill, calm. What did you make of, of what they set up there, that they are coming to knock you out, they're not going to win this fight, uh, they, they're not coming to win this fight on points. Does that surprise you? Is that a double bluff? You should, you should look at how Andy Lee boxed his career. Did he ever knock any, anybody out? 
He was a pretty big puncher, Andy Lee, in his prime, yeah. In his prime, and then afterwards he just became safe, you know, it's our boxing, you know. Uh, it's difficult because you can't compare Joseph Parker to Tyson Fury. You know, Tyson Fury is a different beast. You know, Tyson Fury lives fighting, he loves fighting, he was born fighting. And then, you, and then suddenly he compares Joseph Parker to uh, Tyson Fury to Joseph Parker, it's totally different. You know, uh, you know, for me, I, I'm just do what I do best. You know, I, I'm not going to tell you I'm going to come. If I tell you I'm going to come boxing, you're probably going to laugh at me. If I say I'm going to come and stick and move, you're going to laugh at me. But all I'm going to say is it's going to be a great fight. Yeah, David Hayes said earlier that, that was quite an interesting conversation he had with David Price, that when you're inside, you're so dangerous. To get inside, you might have to eat some leather and by, by taking that risk, you know, I don't want to put it as basic as this, but do you risk, you know, getting knocked out yourself to land the knockout. Yeah, but you know I get inside so easy. Because they're scared of me coming inside, they're already tr retreating. So I'm, I'm going to run in there. As we say, it's going to be the W, man. The gates go bing, and the horses are out. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to lie to you, we love these fight weeks because you always come with something. There's always something up your sleeve. What else is left? I'm intrigued. Can you tell us too much, or is it serious now? From, from now on, on uh, in does the Spider-Man costumes and that go away, and it's serious business, or we still got a few tricks up your sleeve? Yeah. There's a big one to come. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Can you tease it? Can you tell us anything? Mm, I can't tell you anything. Okay. You <laughs> okay. You may be really nervous now. Uh, <laughs> have you just got a, a final sort of message there? There's a, the, the talking's good, but um, fight night is approaching. Have you got a final message if we don't get a chance to catch up with you tomorrow? Eddie needs to change his bubble, man, because this bubble is just bad. That's all I've got to say, man. <laughs> yeah. I've done a lot of them now. Look, I'm, I'm on your side. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to bubble life being complete. Thank you very much for coming and joining us. You can have your costume back. Yeah, I'm glad I was. No, 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 no. The less said about that, the better. Thank you very much.